Shadow Star. I jerked awake, looking around in utter confusion as the crystal fell from my chest and onto the cloudy floor. I didn't fall through the clouds, thank the goddesses, but still I was in a bit of a shock and confusion at what had just happened. My head pounded as memories, not my own, flooded into my brain. Most of them were too confusing for me to even understand. One stuck. The one where I felt as if I was Absent Moon. Night Stalker. It was unlike any memory I'd experienced, a memory or before. I felt everything. I knew everything Night Stalker did during that time in his life, or at least what he was thinking about. I knew a great deal of what happened to him by now, when he was branded and thrown out of the Enclave. But I hadn't known that Greta was the one who saved him. I knew he ended up with her at some point, and she was the one who snatched him from the sky. The memory was fading now. But that place they talked about, Aurora's Twin Peaks, stuck. Something about it was important, but what? Then it came to me, and using my Mark II, I searched through my inventory until I found the letter I had found in the absent ruins, and pulled it up to read it again. G. Sorry, I couldn't stick around here. I have too much work that needs to be finished. I'm grateful that you helped me, and if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have survived that fall. You've always been there for me, even after so much time and what I did. I'm not sure if you've forgiven me or not. Either way, it was good to see you again, my friend. I wouldn't have left without talking to you first, but time is short, and what I have to do can't wait. I have to correct the sins of my past if Ponykind is to survive. You were right. I was a fool for so many years. I was such a damned fool. Don't worry, though. Soon everything will be better. Go back to your family. They need you more than I do. Life is crazy as hell. Don't get, let my past destroy what you've done over the years. I left you the sword you gave me. Where I'm going, I won't need it. My power armor will serve me just fine. Like it always has. I'm also leaving you this memory orb. It's one of the only ones I was able to get back. I figured you'd enjoy watching it if you ever found a recollector. It's the one of that night. You know the one I'm talking about. It's one of my happiest moments, next to the day I met you. If you wish to view it, the password is easy, at least for you. It's the name of the place where we watched the sunset when we were young. I have to go. I'm sure the Enclave will be coming for me soon. Don't worry, though. If they find me, I'll make them pay for branding me. I'll miss you, my friend. Please, leave a happy life and forget about me. My world is coming to an end. Don't let yours. A.M. I finished reading it, and it finally clicked. Greta had given misery to Night Stalker at some point. That's why it was in the ruins. He left her one of the memory orbs he had Dwarf Star make for him to give to the only creature in his life he truly loved. He put a passcode on it that only Greta would understand, a memory orb I still hadn't viewed because I never knew what the passcode was. Now I did. Aurora's Twin Peaks. It had to be. G for Greta, from AM, Absent Moon. He loved her so much that he wanted her to go back to Crimson Canyon and forget about him. But she never found his letter. She never found the orb or the sword. I could still see both blades in that memory, even if it was faded away. Misery I knew all too well because I'd been using the black blade for a while now. I still had it with me. Or I'd given it back to me before I left for this mission. She said I... She couldn't use Misery right now because she was still a pony. I saw joy in that memory, too. Its blade had been as white as snow. Its handle red like blood, and it had the same faint blue glow around its edge. Star metal. It was a set of weapons. 
joy and misery, heads or tails, good and evil, life and death. Whatever happened to joy? Was it still with Greta's body? Or was it lost somewhere? Maybe the Enclave took it when she died. Either way, I couldn't do much about finding it now. I was tempted to go into the memory orb, but I had work to do, and from the light coming and the slightly through the windows, morning was approaching. Still, I pulled misery from my saddlebags where I'd been keeping it and said softly, I wish I had both of you. I'm sure you'd love to be reunited with your twin. I felt silly talking to a sword, but ever since the weapon stopped itself from hurting Aura or me and ripped itself away from Aquila, I felt that the weapon had a bit of its own kind of special magic. Too bad you ha can't help find joy, I said, and then almost jumped back as Misery glowed with a black light and felt it pull to one direction of my magic. What? The fuck? I held onto the blade as it pulled me around until it started pointing to the northeast. When it stopped, the black light around the blade flashed white, then black, then blue, and back to black. It did this several times before it finally stopped, and went back to looking completely normal. Narrowing my eyes, I pulled my pit buck and looked at my map. I zoomed out further and further until I had everywhere I'd been in the last few weeks. Following the direction I was facing, and going in a straight line, I saw that I was facing towards the Twin Cities. No, north of them. I looked back at Misery. Is Joy in the Crystal Empire? The blade hummed in my magical grip, flaring white slightly before it went lifeless again. If that wasn't a hint, then I was crazier than I thought. I smiled and closed out of my map, then said to Misery, when this is all over, I'll have to go there anyway. See if I can find joy when we get there. Misery flashed again, and smiled as I put it into its sheath across my back. I stretched and threw my duster on over Misery, and started heading towards the living room. It was time to save my dad, new Pegasus, then kill myself, a child of the stars. I was all ready to burst down the halls of this large house and take on Stratus when I nearly slammed right into Fairy Glitter. Well, there goes my hero's entrance. Shadow, you're up early. Good, we have some work to get done before we start on the rest of the plan, she said. She looked tired, but happy. Um, where's Solstice and Stardust? I asked. Eating breakfast and still talking. None of us slept much last night, but we'll be ready for tonight, she said with a smile. Follow me to my recording room. We need to get that message out before every pony is up and heading off to work. So, you're not mad about what I did last night? I asked as I followed her. Oh, I'm furious, she said, and she really sound, didn't sound like it. But it all worked out in the end. Stardust has so many stories from his time in the stable, and it's wonderful to hear about his life and adventures. You know the stuff I didn't see or hear while I was keeping an eye on him. Did you know that he has a crush on that mutant friend of yours? I rolled my eyes. Yeah, I know. We talked about it a few times, and she's not a mutant, she's just different. She's psychotic and dangerous, if you ask me, but it's not my place to tell him who he falls in love with, Fairy Glitter said. She's having a hard time with her mixed DNA. She's not psychotic. Well, not normally, I said. I know all about it. I've already hacked into that Dr. Gauze's terminal and pulled up all the data he's managed to collect on her blood work. I'm no doctor, so I can't tell you myself what's making her go crazy, but I sent the intel to Stormy. She thinks she can fix her easily enough. She said, like hacking into a Wastelander's terminal and taking valuable data from it was no big deal. Oh, wait a second. You did what? Why would you do that? I asked. She looked back at me, confused. 
Solstice told me what was going on with her a couple weeks back and wanted to know if I could help. So I did what I do best and got the intel I could on her and sent it to the right pony to take a look at it. Stormy's a thousand times smarter than that wasteland doctor. I'm sure she'll figure it out. Speaking into hacking into stuff, I also got some intel not long ago that a doctor in Thunderhead found a cure for a killing joke. I guess it's a slightly modified treatment from back before the war. So I have a list of what you'll need if you want to get Aura back to normal too. I almost tripped over myself as she said that. You can fix Aura? She looked back at me. Of course. I thought that you might like that. Well, yeah, of course I would. I was kind of hoping it would be something that would just wear off after some time, just like what happened with me, but this would make it a whole lot easier. I said happily. I can go send the recipe to the Shadow Talons if you'd like. I'm sure Aura's back there by now. If you're all expecting to go into a fight, she might want her normal body back, she said as we reached the door. That would be amazing, I said, then looked over at the door. So, where are we? The bathroom. Stormy told me that if you need to remove your disguise, that you would need a shower. Oh, yeah. I said, reaching into my saddlebags and pulling out a bottle with a potion. Stormy made just for this. Just need to use this, then remove the fake cutie mark and contacts, and I'm all good. I thought I needed to stay like this until we saved my dad, though. She chuckled. I can't convince ponies to trust you if they don't look the part, my dear. Now go wash up. I'm sure you'd love a warm shower after everything you've been through. I'll check on you in a little while. Also, let me have your barding and duster. I'll get them cleaned up for you and fixed while I can while you wash up. I removed my clothes and gave them to her. She wrinkled her nose a bit as I gave them to her making sure to pull misery out of its sheath before I did. You, you really need to clean your body more, Shadow. I rolled my eyes. Trust me, I've smelled worse. I shivered, remembering the dumpster of death. Way worse. I'm sure you have, she said with one of those assuring smiles you only see on adults that are just humoring a young pony's delusions of grandeur. I should tell you that even though it's gross and dangerous down there, there is at least time to bathe a little. Us fillies have to look and smell our best to keep our title of the fairer sex. I don't know about that. The Wasteland doesn't have as nice of facilities as this. Plus, I... I think I still have a lingering odor from this one time I had to hide in a dumpster full of rotting corpses, I replied. Her face went slightly green and twisted into a look of disgust. She said, Use the magnolia body wash on the shelf. That should take care of it. If you'll excuse me, I need to go get this soaked in something. Okay, thank you, I said. With that, I went into the bathroom and got into the shower. It took me a while to get cleaned up. First of all, the potion I had to apply took a while to wash away the special dyes that Stormy had used to make me look as I did now. Second, I had a hard time removing the contacts. I think cutie mark was easy, as it just fell off once I applied the potion. Once that was done, I had to really clean myself. Even with the dye gone, I was fucking dirty. It hadn't been long since I was in the ministry, though with everything I'd done in the past day or so, I was surprised I wasn't gagging at my own smell. Finishing, I stepped out and noticed I was uh, starting to sink into the floor a bit. I would have panicked, but then I realized the spell was starting to wear off. With a sigh, I recast the Cloudwalker spell and popped back up into the seemingly real floor. I thought it would have lasted longer. Stormy said it was 24 to 30 hour spell. Maybe the spell didn't work on me as like the anesthetic spell the doctors and hidden sands tried to use on me. 
Either way, I'd have to keep an eye on it. I then took a moment to look in the mirror as on the wall as I replayed what happened last night and the flood of information that Crystal put in my head. I wish I had time to go over what was dumped into my brain. I concentrated a little, trying to see if I could pull up anything from that memory dump. I gasped as a quick flash threw th through my brain. For a second, I was Night Stalker again. He, I, him, I can't tell, was rutting against Grutta on a dark moonless night. Then it was gone and I stepped away from the mirror. Okay, maybe I don't want to know everything about him. I really don't need to witness my distant grandfather screwing Aura's distant grandmother. That's just too messed up even for me. Someone knocked on the door, making me jump. It was then followed by Flitty Fairy Glitter saying, Shadow, are you done? I have your botting and duster cleaned, and I patched up a few holes for you. Yeah, I said, going over and opening the door. She was on the other side with my stuff neatly folded and laying on her back. Smiling, I took them and once again donned my barding and duster. I picked up misery and sheathed it once again, then took a deep breath and frowned as a strange scent I'd never smelled before hit my nose. What is that? What? The scent? She asked. Lavender. She started heading down the hall again. What's lavender? In answer, she just chuckled and showed me to another room a few doors down. I hope you're ready for this. You're going to be speaking to most of the population in a few moments. I followed her into the room and gasped at the amount of tech that was shoved inside of it. I'd love to name every single thing I saw, but I don't think I knew what most of it was. What I did see was that I understood it was a few terminals, microphones, and a few chairs. The rest were a bunch of blinking lights, dials, switches, and what looked like security cameras, and a bunch of wires on the floor around the equipment. What is all this? I asked. It's a radio station, mostly. But I also have cameras, so I can record you while you tell the Enclave what you need to, she said as she made her way over to a terminal and started entering something. Sit in the red chair and I'll tell you what you need to say. I'm just setting this up to broadcast live and record at the same time. So you want me to sit in this chair? I asked, indicating as I walked over to it and talk to hundreds of ponies. That's the general idea, yes, Fairy Glitter said as she finished what she was doing and moved a large camera to face me, then walked over and moved her microphone close. And it'll be more like thousands. This is going out to Nimbus, Stratus, the Twin Cities, and the Crystal Empire. It might even get some ponies in the kingdom. I'm mostly blocking out the Enclave officers' channels, but I know a few soldiers who will be listening in. I... I've never talked in front of so many ponies before, though, I said, feeling a nervous flutter in my stomach. Don't think of it like that. Just think about talking into a camera. Only you and I are here. That should help. Now I prepared a speech for you to say. Keep it to it, and we should be all fine, she said, holding out a stack of cards. I took them at my magic. You realize that I'll sound like a robot if I read something like this, right? She shrugged. The goal here is to get as many of the citizens to listen to you as we can. Now I'm going live in three, two... Wait, I'm not ready! I started to say, but Flary Glitter didn't stop. One, and go. Fairy Glitter said as the red light appeared on the camera. I took a deep breath as I looked into the camera and then... Started to read from the cards. <clears throat> Citizens of the Grand Pegasus Enclave. I stopped and looked down at the cards again, sighing, and then kept going. Many of you might know my face. You might know the duster I wear. Some even may know who I am, or at least my name. I'm the courier. 
I stopped again, and Fairy Glitter hissed. You need to keep reading. I didn't listen. I was too busy looking down at the well-prepared speech she wanted me to give to the Pegasi. She said the goal was to get as many on my side as I could. But how was I going to do that? Were the words another mare wrote for me? I'm not Fairy Glitter or part of her family. I'm Shadowstar. I'm a courier. I'm my dad's daughter and my mother's filly. The granddaughter of Night Stalker himself. If I want them to follow me, to help me, I have to do what I've always done. I have to be myself. With another deep breath, I lifted the cards in my magic and looked right into the camera, feeling the fear and nerves flow away like water as I hardened myself to what had to be done. Sorry about that, but the ponies who want me to give this message to you all want me to keep my words to a script. If any of you know me, a little, even if you've only heard stories about me, you should know that I play by my own rules. Shadow, what are you doing? Fairy Glitter asked. Trust me, I whispered, then went back to looking at the camera. Yes, I'm Shadow Star, the courier. For the past few months, you've heard the stories about me, and sadly, some of them are probably true. I fought your soldiers. I've blown a hole in your clouds, not once, not twice, but three times. Twice with a super weapon, and once with my own magic. I forgot that I had just done it again a week or so ago, but it's too late to correct myself now. I kept going. I've destroyed Mill City Tower, took down a few of the sins, been your enemy for a while now. What most of you may not know is that I didn't start the fight. Until a few weeks ago, when I destroyed Stable Nine, I'd never met another Pegasus aside from my friend Stardust. I had no problem with the Enclave or the Cloud Cover. That was until Winterfrost came down with a group of soldiers and attacked me, saying he was looking for my friend. I protected myself and managed to get away from him, but with the help of a mare named Cloak and the Sins, they kept coming after me on orders from your former High Council ponies. Back then, I had no memory of who I was or where I'd come from apart from my stable. I'm sure most of you think that that's all there is about me. To most of you, I'm just a stable mare who's gotten lucky a few too many times. Well, I'm here to tell you that's wrong. I looked over at Fairy Glitter, but she was just watching me with something almost like awe on her face, so I kept going. As I said, my name is Shadowstar, but I'm not from Stable 28, or even the New Pegasus area. I'm from the Crystal Empire. I'm the daughter of Grimoire Spell and Nightshade. I'm also the distant grandmother, or granddaughter, to Minette, Lightning Dust, and Night Stalker himself. My line came from Nightingale on my father's side, and Dwarf Star on my mother's. I got my memories back a few weeks back, and I now know who I am. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of you a fellow Enclave citizen who was lost and abandoned when I was young. Thought to be dead to most, but in reality being hidden away to keep me safe from the leaders in the Enclave who wanted to use a power I held for themselves. I'm Enclave, just like all of you. Only I've seen the truth about what's going on in our cities, what they're hiding from you in the wasteland, and I've been fighting to fix the mistakes of my family. I'm here today to tell you that I've come to Stratus, in the city of my father, to do what I've always done. Fight for the betterment of society. I took a moment to let that sink in, then kept it up. A few days ago, Nightshade, my father, was arrested by Strife and Winter Frost, and is now scheduled to be executed tomorrow along with an ally of mine who you all know as Greed. Not only did I come home to find that my father is going to be killed for the service he's provided to better not only Enclave, but the ponies in the wasteland, I've come to find Stratus, a jewel in the sky, letting Eastern Pegasi tell them what to do. Nimbus, Stratus, the Crystal Empire, and the Twin Cities have lasted 200 years without their help, 
and now one of your own betrays us all to them? You all are okay with just sitting around and letting them take over? I thought Stratus stood for more than that. I thought Stratus was better than the rest of the Enclave. Where the other cities fight each other and try to rule one another, Stratus, Nimbus, the Crystal Empire, and the Twin Cities have always worked together. We may not have always gotten along, that's true, but when it comes to protecting our way of life, we've always banded together. It's time to do so again. Pegasi and unicorns of the Western Enclave, let's show Navarro why you aren't to be fucked with. Tomorrow, at the execution, I'm going to go in and save Greed and my father. I only have a couple of ponies helping me right now, and we can't do it alone. Let's save Nightshade. Let's save Greed. And let's kick Navarro out of our home. I was letting all the emotions I have had to push down over the past few weeks out. My anger, loss... Sorrow, pain, and more filled every word as I gave the speech I didn't know I had in me. I am Shadowstar, and I'm also the courier. I've put everything I had into protecting those who I love ever since I escaped from the stable. But even I'm not strong enough to stop the invasion of Stratus. I know this because I wasn't strong enough to stop a monster who tried to kill me just last week. My mother, Grimoire Spell, is dead. She gave her life to save mine from that monster. So, even if some of you are too scared to fight for some pony you don't know or don't trust, then fight for my father, some pony who has dedicated his life to protecting you. I said as I started to feel myself tremble a bit. Tears were welling up as I said one last thing. The sadness coming through in my words, as I said. I can't lose another parent so soon. Please, Stratus, rise up and help me save them. Take back our skies and take back our home. If you're with me, be at the execution tomorrow. When you see me, be ready to fight. Those who aren't willing should stay inside. I don't want any of you to get hurt when the fighting starts. Sure, I've done my fair share of killing in the wasteland, but every unnecessary loss hurts not only me. It hurts every loved one of the ones lost. I turned my tear-stained face away from the camera and walked out of the room. I ignored Fairy Glitter trying to say something to me. I ignored the anger still bubbling inside. I ignored everything that... As I made my way back to the kitchen where Stardust and Solstice were eating breakfast, laughing at some joke Cascade was telling them, they looked at me as I approached. Solstice was ready to ask what was wrong, but I spoke before she could. I need both of you to come to the training room with me. Stardust looked confused as he said, I thought we had to get stuff set up for the plan. Don't worry about that. After the speech I just gave, I can't do more at the moment. Everything else will depend on tonight and tomorrow. We have today to get my magic honed so I can survive what we're going to do tomorrow, I said as I turned away and headed for the training room. Then I stopped and turned back to Solstice. Give me a set of power armor. She cocked an eyebrow at me. What for? I grinned. You two are going to teach me how to use it, because I'm going to make sure I can get my dad's armor to him tomorrow. Also, Stardust, give me your best rifle. I need you to shoot at me. A lot. If I could have gotten a picture of Cascade, Stardust, and Solstice's faces at the time, it would have been priceless. I started towards the training room again, and my friends followed me.